Well, the recent fire which devastated St. Francis Bay has meant that a lot of investors have seen their investments go up in smoke, so to say. Insuring a holiday home is often a nice to do rather than a front of mind for a lot of investors. But getting it wrong can be very expensive as uh, the 80 or so people who lived in St. Francis and lost their homes have found out. Joining us now to discuss this further, Peter Todd, CEO of Mutual and Federal. Peter, thank you for joining us. Uh, so, so that's the number I've seen. 80 or so houses were damaged. Uh, from an industry point of view, do we know the stats right now to, to what extent this, uh, the damage is from St. Francis? Yeah, we don't have the detailed number as yet. We're still trying to collate that as an industry. Uh, the last number we heard was 76 homes um, gutted. So if you, yeah, if you apply an average to that in terms of the home and contents, uh, we could probably get to about 400 million just from that fire. And of course, um, you know, each, each insurer would be affected differently. Have you had claims coming in? We have. We've, uh, we've had three claims um, to date, uh, mm -hmm. one of which being a complex, so there are more units in that. Um, so I think relatively we've got off pretty lightly in terms of that particular incident. Yeah. I mean, the, obviously the relevance of this discussion now is to look at uh, the value of insurance uh, when there are disasters that, that you can't, of course, anticipate. Um, I mean, 80% of the homes here were holiday homes. So when it comes to holiday homes, what are the trends you're seeing in South Africa? Do people, uh, are you able to, to say whether people are insuring their second home, as a, a, so to say? Yeah, I think it's, you know, hopefully people are, um, because clearly you can see from this incident it's a, it's a major exposure. I think the, one has to be careful um, as a consumer of insurance in terms of holiday homes because it is a very different risk profile. So, um, you know, the way insurers will look at a, at a holiday home will require you to make certain um, disclosures, which could impact uh, at the time of a claim as to whether that claim is valid or not. So, mm -hmm. you know, people tend to use holiday homes differently. Um, so, for example, you would be renting it out, possibly. Um, what are the implications of that from an insurance perspective? Or it could be standing open for most of the year. And that obviously also has a different implication from an insurance perspective because it increases the risk. Um, because if you would have, just as an example, if you had a geyser burst, if it's a home you're living in, you know the geyser's burst. If it's mm -hmm. in your holiday home, by the time uh, we discover it, it could have caused uh, much greater damage than would be the case if somebody was occupying the home. So it does have an implication from a pricing perspective, and therefore it is a requirement to disclose those kind of facts. But often people don't, unfortunately, think of that. Mm. I'm guessing there's a, a number of other elements they don't think about in terms of the risk exposure of their holiday home. So for example, the fact um, that they might have people on the premises on holiday when they're renting it out. Yeah. Um, in the event that there's uh, an event that prevents them from gaining rental income, that's another event. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about those yeah, so elements? Yeah, so you know, again, to have the right liability insurance is critical because if you've got tenants in there and um, somebody's injured, so I'm not aware of any injuries as a result of this fire, but potentially, you know, somebody could be in a house and if there wasn't adequate, um, you know, fire uh, escapes or fire protection mechanism, etc., you know, there could be a liability exposure to the owner of the house who's renting it out. Um, and, you know, so you'd have to make sure that under your policy, you've got adequate liability cover to protect you uh, from that. So it's definitely a consideration. If, if I can ask a, just a s sort of silly homeowner's type question. Um, what is the difference in premium, if you can put it in percentage terms, if you had, say, two identical homes and one had a tile roof and one had a thatch roof? How much more of an issue is it for an insurer? Yeah, it's a hard question to answer because each insurer has got a different um, sort of risk appetite for that. So, you know, you could go to an insurer who specializes, you know, in thatch and have a big enough spread of thatch risk um, and therefore would give you a more competitive premium. Okay. Um, but there is certainly um, a significant premium for thatch and I think now if you're going to be in St. Francis and renewing your thatch house, um, you're going to be expected to pay more. I mean, reality. you know, just looking at the St. Francis situation, one might say, you know, people, it was a disaster waiting to happen. Unfortunately, it did happen. But, you know, you've got a whole town built with thatch roofs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> as I was saying. What's your thoughts on that? Well, well I, I would hope that the people who rebuild their homes now use, um, use slate and not thatch, because that is the alternative now in St. Francis. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things, you know, it will never happen to me. Um, and then the day it happens, everyone says, well, it's quite obvious. Why did nobody think of that? Um, so, you know, it is a classic example of an accumulation uh, of risk. Um, and so, therefore, I think now insurers will have to model that into their pricing when they look at St. Francis Bay specifically for insurance renewals. 
Yeah, there, there are two parts of insurance, though, if we had to break down yes. insuring a house. I mean, you don't, you don't say a holiday home, but, uh, you know, a house is a house. Uh, so there's the structural cover, and then you've got covering the content. So it's a breakdown how, how you look at that. Yeah. So, well, exactly. So there, there's cover for the, the house itself, and then the contents within the house. Now, you can have a comprehensive policy that will cover both. Um, but often those are separately insured. So particularly where you've got a mortgage on a property. So the bank will try and sell you an insurance policy with the mortgage, which will just cover the house and not the contents. Um, and you know, if you then uh, pay back your mortgage, often, unfortunately, insureds forget to then go and, and buy the separate insurance for their house. So they might be under the impression that their house is still covered, but it's actually only the contents. Um, and sometimes the other way around, they think that, well, the house cover includes the contents, which is not the case. So, you know, I think insurance, um, the need for advice, I think, is very, very important in insurance. In terms of a complex, I mean, that's obviously a very different type of insurance structure. Mm. What do people need to be aware of there? Because in my understanding, a lot of the um, decisions are actually taken by the body corporate yes. in terms of um, how much is covered. Mm. What What is your advice for, for viewers around that? Yeah, I think you would want to be satisfied that the body corporate is adequately covered so I think you should be asking the body corporate you know in terms of uh, their insurance um, for the building and again the body corporate would cover the building but not your contents um, so again just to be sure that you understand the difference between the building cover and the contents cover because mm -hmm. the obligation to insure the contents would rest with you. So, so um, you know, of course, just let's reiterate that point around uh, getting insurance with your mortgage because is that what banks generally in South Africa do or is it just some banks? Uh, there's no bank that I'm aware of that doesn't try and sell you an insurance policy. <laughs> yeah. I've got a caution tale on that, though, um, if anyone's listening. Um, I recently bought a home and um, I discovered to my horror the other day after my, my gate was struck by lightning that my circuit board had been fried. And when I phoned up to find out if, the, um, if it was covered by insurance, um, it, I subsequently found out that although the, the, the financier had passed on the, the documents to the insurance company that I, who I won't name, um, they actually hadn't bothered to begin deducting any um, uh, premiums um, f from me. So in other words, it wasn't insured. So yeah, if, if you do get a mortgage and the, and the bank does ask you to fill out the forms, maybe you know, pick up the phone and phone the insurance company to make sure they've actually activated it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And there we go, <laughs> follow up. In terms of uh, high risk areas in South Africa for um, disasters, are there any particular hot spots in terms of fires and you know, the flooding? Well, flooding? Or, well, I guess you know, the floods, I mean, uh, we saw recently in Port Alfred, the flooding there again, a holiday destination. So I guess a lot of people have had their holiday plans. Scuppered, but um, you know the Vaal River as well. We've had uh, a number of years where that's flooded. Um, so there are particular hot spots. We are aware of that. The Gauteng region, because of the high concentration of values um, and the risk of hail. So again, we've seen that in the last couple of weeks, um, significant damage um, from hail. What about um, if you know, for many people who have a holiday home, they actually use it to, to generate income? Uh, can you insure this income? Uh, how much more costly is that? What are the considerations you need to take mm. into account? You can, and I think that's a pitfall because if you look at a normal personal insurance policy, it wouldn't cover that. Um, so you'd have to look towards a commercial uh, policy to cover that aspect. So, well, can know, it be a top up in your insurance though? If you have it kind could of possibly, normal, uh, it, it, you know, it could possibly, but um, more than likely it would fall within, an, you know, under a commercial policy because you're using it for commercial purposes. Um, so the cover there would be slightly different. Um, so you know, so it is insurable. I think is the is the answer to that. Yeah. Again, it's about getting the right advice. Mm -hmm. um, you know, are you insuring it as a business? I mean, are you renting it? Sorry, as a business, or is it just occasionally you let it out to people? And what are the implications of that? And you'd have to weigh that up against the uh, the cost of the insurance and decide whether it's worth your while or not. So. Seek advice would be my advice. <laughs> and from the perspective of an insurer, what are the impacts of a huge disaster like this? And how do you look to mitigate? Yeah, so um, you know, all reinsurers will buy reinsurance protection. So we insure ourselves. That's what reinsurance is all about. Um, and we you know, employ a lot of clever actuaries, and they do modeling around these potential catastrophe events to try and work out you know, what is the right level of protection um, to buy, because obviously there's a premium to pay for that. Um, so again, it depends on the strength of the insurance company's balance sheet as to what that risk appetite is. Um, but we will model particular risk scenarios 
um, and whether it's a one in a hundred year event, a one in ten year event, etc., um, you know, it will have uh, different implication from the reinsurance cost. I mean, I know that whenever we have kind of weather related discussions or climate change related discussions, uh, there's always someone from the insurance industry who, who's, who's able to speak on this. Um, so, so are you seeing more weather related disasters when it comes to, uh, you know, the whole issue around climate change? Is that a reality from the insurer's perspective? Yeah, I think definitely. I mean, there are, there's undoubtedly a change in weather patterns. Um, so what you do get is you get a combination of changing weather patterns and therefore more severe weather. But you also get a build up in, in terms of the exposure, so concentration of risk. You know, So as cities grow um, and people become more affluent, uh, more expensive assets. Um, and of course, Hurricane Sandy really speaks to that. I exactly, yeah. So mm -hmm. you know, when the storms do hit, there's a lot more in terms of financial consequences. Also, there's a lot about what is the, 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 the coverage from an insurance perspective. So if you take motor vehicles as an example, we have relatively few insured motor vehicles on our roads. Um, and um, you know, if that had to change, a hailstorm like we had a couple of weeks ago, you would see much worse um, consequences for insurers. So, so you know, does that mean that the cost of insurance is, is going up from a longer term perspective in light of the fact that you know, there's these more unpredictable weather related issues and of course you talk about the concentration mm -hmm. risk of build up in cities? Yeah, so you know, ours is a volatile industry from a pricing perspective so the market does go through cycles but I think if you had to extrapolate that over a period of time I think you would see the cost go up as a result of the fact that the risk exposure goes up. And your, your reinsurance costs are undoubtedly also going to start feeding through into the pricing. Yeah, and then, you know, incident like Hurricane Sandy, you would think, you know, doesn't really impact us in this country, but it does, unfortunately, because it impacts the global reinsurance market, and that's where we reinsure ourselves as insurers in, in this country. So that impacts the cost of our reinsurance, which we obviously have to then factor back into our pricing. Well, very interesting discussion, but of course if we could just take it back to, to the issue around insuring your, your second home, uh, whether it be an investment, a holiday home, uh, if you could just kind of wrap up your advice uh, for our viewers. Yeah, my advice is quite simple, is, is make sure you seek out proper advice. Um, and it's not that insurers are out there to, to catch you, it's, you know, it's a genuine need for us to understand the risk that we are underwriting. Um, so there's certain information that we do require in order to be able to assess that. At the same time, individuals need to understand that there are differences in the policies that they buy and they have different uh, consequences from a coverage perspective. Uh, and therefore, I think the need for advice is paramount.